Hi everybody, welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Julio Jones. Now, unfortunately, I actually just released the Atlanta Falcons off season and how I thought it went and how I think their season's gonna go. So if you haven't seen that video, um, I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that out. But unfortunately, this was before we heard about the Julio Jones news. And even in the video on the Atlanta Falcons, I had talked about how trading Julio Jones is, and I just can't see it as a good decision for your football team, especially when you decide to keep Matt Ryan. So when you keep Matt Ryan, you're saying to your organization and your fans that you're trying to compete for you know, a playoff spot this year and you're not trying to rebuild. And if you're not trying to rebuild, trading Julio is not a good idea. But obviously with the news that has just come out, it now makes more sense. Julio Jones has actually requested a trade and from Adam Schefter earlier today, it was reported that he has requested a trade several months back but obviously because of the whole post June 1st trade, they have to wait in order to trade him because they need the cap space. Um, they need to be able to put some of his bonus money that they would have to pay if they traded him you know, pre June 1. They need to put that to next year because they don't even have the cap space to sign their rookies. So now obviously from the Atlanta Falcons standpoint, it makes sense now you're not trading him because you just don't want him on your roster. If he has asked you for a trade, that means unfortunately you're trading him because you have no choice, right? If he doesn't wanna play for you guys anymore, you almost have no choice, right? You just trade him for really the best package you can get. You know, and I always thought that was strange. Like I said, you know, and everyone that I talked to, I always would say like, hey, I just don't understand how you would trade Julio. It's just not a good idea. You know, you can't really convince me that trading Julio is a good idea for your football team. But when he requests a trade, it's a little different because now, even though you want to move forward and try to make the playoffs this year, if a player says he doesn't want to play for you anymore, you kind of have to move on from that player while still trying to be competitive. Just because you move off of Julio, it doesn't mean that you should also move off of Matt Ryan, right? You're staying with Matt Ryan because you know he's a capable quarterback and he can bring you to the playoffs again. So I think for Falcons fans, this is just a very unfortunate situation where a guy who's been a all pro receiver for you guys for the last decade no longer wants to play for you. So unfortunately, you know, again, if you're Atlanta, you have to trade him. Now, obviously every single team in the league could use a receiver like Julio, right? Even if he comes to your team and he's not the number one receiver, adding Julio is only gonna give you another weapon that teams have to now, you know, decide who they want to double. So obviously you've probably already heard of really the bigger ones, right? Teams like the Tennessee Titans because of what Derrick Henry and AJ Brown tweeted out. Um, a lot of people have been talking about going to Green Bay, obviously with the whole Aaron Rodgers situation. If Rodgers really doesn't want to come back and he's really upset, maybe if you bring in a guy like Julio Jones and you show him, hey, we're going to try to compete for a Super Bowl this year. We're trying to give you as much talent this year as we possibly can. It might change his mind. And then I did hear one person talk about a very interesting trade possibility, which is to go to the San Diego Chargers, excuse me, the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, at that point, um, you know, when you really think about it, it, it is a good idea, right? Um, you do have a young team, um, obviously a very young quarterback, so you can afford his salary for the next two, three seasons. Um, and again, a lot of teams do this. While you have that young quarterback, you're able to pay more guys around the quarterback to put the rest of the roster in position to compete for a Super Bowl while you have him, you know, only for a couple million dollars a season. And then of course, the New England Patriots, that is a easy one. They are probably the team that's most in desperate need of a star wide receiver. So again, they may be more desperate in the sense of give up the most to get him. Now, in terms of what it might take to give to get Julio Jones, it's really strange because you would think it would start as a one. You know, that would be really where the conversation starts. But from what you hear from guys like Adam Schefter and stuff, from their reporting is, you know, they would be shocked if he gave up a one when they're really expecting it to be like a two or maybe a two and a four or something like that, which to me is pretty crazy because Again, uh, Julio is like 31, so I think realistically at the wide receiver position, he can probably be a top 10 receiver for another year or two probably. And then even then, after he's like 33, we saw Larry Fitzgerald play, you know, very well into his mid to late 30s. So there's a chance Julio could still be a top 20-ish wide receiver, you know, two or three more years, right? So now you're talking about getting Julio Jones for three, maybe four plus years as he is a legit number one wide receiver still. 
I understand a lot of teams are going to be out just because of the contract because again when you trade for Julio you still have to take on his salary and you have to pay him so a lot of teams won't have that kind of cap space but for the teams that do again how can you not justify adding a number one wide receiver to your roster you know I know one of my friends is a Tennessee Titans fan so I texted him as soon as I heard that news and you know it makes sense right like if you get Julio on the Tennessee Titans roster um, again, you already have A.J. Brown, who's a very good, legit number one. And obviously with Derrick Henry, you have the best running back in the league. So at this point, it's hard to stop the offense already. If you add Julio, I just don't know how that offense is not a top three offense this year, right? You almost have to stack the box to stop Derrick Henry, right? He is literally the best player on your offense. But when you stack the box, you're literally leaving A.J. Brown and Julio Jones one-on-one, -on -one, and those two dudes combined are gonna eat this single coverage alive. It's almost impossible to think of how you could even stop that offense if they were to acquire Julio. And obviously the same with teams like Green Bay, right? Their offense was already number one. You add another legit number one wide receiver, and that's gonna be scary. And then obviously with New England, if you add him to the roster, at least now you have a decent wide receiving core. Obviously you'd have to include the tight ends in that, but you would go from one of the worst skill positions last year to probably I would say middle of the pack if you were to acquire a guy like Julio, right? Because now you got Julio, um, the two tight ends you signed, and then Nelson Aguilar. So at least you have, you know, in one off season, you drastically improved the wide receiver and just maybe the receiving position so yeah, obviously that's huge news. So obviously if you've already seen the Atlanta Falcons video, um, it kind of gave you the projections of what I think they're gonna do. So obviously that's probably changed now um, if they do end up trading Julio. And again, it looks like at this point they are going to definitely trade him. Um, it makes it a little different because now your defense, we already know is not gonna be that great. The offense is definitely gonna take a step back without Julio because now Calvin Ridley is your clear cut number one. Now he is a good wide receiver. He did have a good year last year. And obviously he did have to play that number one wide receiver role for the couple games that Julio missed. But I think it's a little different when for the entire season, you are the unquestioned number one and you're going to get double coverage and also the best corner every week. So we're gonna see how he responds to that. Also, I think as a whole, from the offensive standpoint, um, they are obviously a passing team. So when you lose a star number one wide receiver like that, I think it's going to, you know, kind of drop that whole offense back a little bit. They might still finish as a top 10, but I don't know if they're going to get to the top five this year without a guy like Julio. And again, if their offense is to finish maybe fringe top 10 and their defense is one of the bottom five to 10 defenses in the league, I don't know if that's good enough to win eight or nine games to get you into the playoffs. So yeah, I think if they have to trade Julio, it's going to be a significant hit to their roster in general. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Again, those are just some of my early thoughts of this. And again, like I had said before, um, I just couldn't understand why there was even news and speculation about the Falcons trading Julio. But obviously now we see why. It hasn't really come from the Atlanta Falcons organization. It's more come from Julio Jones himself saying, I do not want to play for you guys anymore. I would like to go to a different team. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Um, if you did like the video, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe. It is the best way to help out this channel. And I look forward to the next video. Bye.